Hello and welcome to the first video tutorial of this Django Web Framework course for beginners. My name is Amir from Backbrace channel and I will be your instructor for the upcoming videos. Throughout this course we will delve into various aspects of Django starting from the basics and gradually progressing towards more advanced topics. And at the end of the course we're going to build a real-life application like this one, an inventory management system. This final project will give you hands-on experience with Django, where we're going to use function-based views and implement clean and simple styles. Our inventory management system will enable you to add products, where you can enter the name of the product, the stock keeping unit, the price, the quantity, and of course, the supplier. Once you're done from adding the product, you can save that product. And now you can have a list of the products saved on your website. You have your product ID, the name, the SKU, the price, the quantity, the supplier, and the actions, where you can actually update your product, or if you want to delete it altogether, you can do that as well. And you will be redirected to a confirmation message asking you if you want to delete this product. If you're hesitant, you can click on cancel. You can go to the inventory app where you have your homepage. You can display all of your products. And again, you can delete the product that you don't want. This project is going to help you consolidate everything that you're going to learn in this course and see how it all comes together in a practical application. And I just want to take a moment here to express my gratitude to NetNinja for giving me the incredible opportunity to become a host content creator. It's a great pleasure indeed to be part of such an amazing team and I'm excited to bring you engaging and entertaining content. Now let's move to the prerequisites. Before diving into Django, it's essential to have a good understanding of Python. So if you consider yourself an intermediate Python programmer, you'll find it easier to follow along with Django. Additionally, familiarity with HTML and CSS is going to be very beneficial. And even if you don't know Python, that's no problem at all because NetNinja got you covered. NetNinja has a lot of great courses for Python as well as HTML and CSS crash courses. And in this first part, I'm going to cover three main questions. What is Django? Why is Django? And what is MVT architecture? So the first question is, what is Django? Django is a Python-based web framework designed for rapid development of efficient web applications. It is often referred to as batteries included framework because it provides built-in features for various aspects of web development. These features include the Django admin interface, default database management system, which is SQLite 3, and many others streamlining the development process. Okay, that's great and all, but why using Django? Why not using any other web framework? The first reason is rapid development. Django enables the creation of fully fledged web applications in a short time. Database flexibility. While SQLite 3 is the default database, Django allows easy switching to other databases like PostgreSQL or SQL Alchemy, for example. Also, you have built-in admin interface. And this indeed simplifies administrative tasks related to website management. And don't worry, we're going to see all of that in practice. And the last reason is extensive ecosystem. So Django has a vast collection of additional packages that are available for extended functionality which is, if you think about it, very handy for rapid development. So Django follows the model view template architecture. MVT separates the logic of your application into three different components. So the first component is the model, if we're going to respect the MVT order put by Django. So the model in Django represents the data structure of your application. It's your database, essentially. It defines the schema of your database tables and encapsulates the logic for interacting with the database. Now let's move to view. A view simply is a Python function or a class that receives HTTP requests and returns HTTP responses. So views are responsible for processing the incoming requests, interacting with the database through models and preparing data to be rendered in a response. And finally, the template. Templates in Django are HTML files that contain the structure of your application's user interface, essentially. And templates can include placeholders and template tags, which are replaced with dynamic content when rendered by Django. Django uses the Django template language. It's very similar to Jinja 2 in Flask, for example. 
Okay, now you've been introduced to the components of the MVT architecture, let's see how it works. So this is a diagram that shows you how the MVT actually works. First of all, the user interacts with the Django application by sending HTTP requests to specific URLs. These requests can be for various actions, such as viewing a page, submitting a form, or performing some other operation. And here comes the role of the view function or class, which processes the request, interacts with the database, and prepares data to be rendered in the response. So when the view interacts with the model to fetch data from the database, it does so by using Django's ORM, or Object Relational Mapping. And ORM simply allows you to interact with the database using Python objects. So instead of writing SQL queries directly, you define your database structure using the Python classes called models. So instead of writing SQL queries directly, you define your database structure using Python classes, which are models. These models represent database tables and each attribute of the model class corresponds to a column in that table. Don't worry, we're going to see that when we're going to practice. The interaction between the view and the model, not only for retrieving data, but it also could be for creating, updating, or deleting records as needed. So after processing the request and interacting with the database, the view prepares data to be rendered in a response as you can see. This data is typically passed to a template, using the Django template language as I mentioned earlier. The Django template language uses template tags and placeholders to dynamically generate HTML content. And finally, the view returns an HTTP response containing the HTML content generated by the template. This response is sent back to the user's browser, which then renders the page and displays it to the user. I understand that everything might seem theoretical for now, but once we dive deeper into Django and start practicing, everything will begin to make sense and fall into place. In the next video, we're going to set up our environment, install Django, and create our first Django project.